Good evening and welcome everybody to online EU trainings webcast for the EPSO assistant exams and something that we're going to cover here uh, in one hour and I would like to thank first of all the number of people interested in this topic which we're something very enthusiastic about and I'd like to share as much information with you as possible. Uh, this is a live broadcast uh, and right now as we speak there are historic meetings happening right across the street uh, but equally historic for your personal careers is hopefully all the information that will help you get an EU job. My name is Andras Banet and I uh, am a partner, senior partner at Online EU Training and Arboros, the company operating the website. And uh, as I said, this is 6 o'clock p.m. in Brussels, but we have participants from basically all over the world, and I'd like to appreciate their time in different time zones around. An important disclaimer I'd like to add is uh, that uh, while we do everything in our power, everything that we can to provide you with the most accurate and with the most up-to-date information possible, uh, the official source of information is obviously the European Personal Selection Office, uh, EPSO. Today, Gabor Mikesh, who's the Managing Director of uh, Arboros and Online EU Training, he'll be uh, helping you with the chat and moderating and helping with the technical issues. And one thing that I'd like to encourage you to do is to join the Facebook chat. Uh, or if you are watching this on our Facebook page, then obviously you are logged in. If you are watching it through the live stream uh, website, please log in and feel free to chat, discuss ideas and something that we'll look at. And if some questions, come, we'll do our best to answer it afterwards. And just to warm up and put you to the mood of dealing with projects, and uh, organization tax and other issues. Here's a little cartoon that we shared on our Facebook page and it attracted quite uh, a number of positive feedbacks. And this is uh, a nice cartoon on how different projects or generally communication issues when delivering, organizing and prioritizing how certain communication issues can lead to different perceptions of the very same issue of how a project is seen by a customer, project leader, sales executive, and what the customer actually needed. We received a number of questions from you, so thanks very much. And we have tried to integrate the answers uh, in today's presentation. Whatever cannot be covered today will be answered uh, in one way or another. We either put up a new tips and tricks chapter or we answer it in a memo uh, we'll decide on the format, but be aware and make sure that you will get the answer to your, to your questions. We will definitely send you the full recording of this, of this webcast uh, within one day after the event, so you can either rewatch it or share it with others, because the most important is that the information travels to the widest possible uh, audience. One technical comment before we delve into the essence of today's webcast, is that uh, try to put your screen on full screen mode. I think that's the F11 or Shift F11 key on most computers, and that provides you an even better visual experience when we are sharing the PowerPoint with you. An appetizer, which is relevant task and a relevant exercise for both the AST1 and the AST3 modules or AST3 exams. And this is something or the type of question that you are going to face uh, both at the AST1 or AST3, whichever of the two you are going to take. Uh, this is a type of uh, question which is the organizing and prioritizing. And as a sample that you have on your screen, is, uh, is a, it's a little uh, task that I would encourage you to look at. And it says that you need to go from Lelystad uh, to a meeting uh, in Alsmer that starts at 8 o'clock. The meeting place is 10 minutes from Alsmer bus station. So which bus from Lelystad do you need to take? And here is the chart that would help you uh, make your choice or make your pick and decide which bus uh, should be taken. Obviously, in an EPSO test, you will have the A, B, C, D uh, options. 
And this is something that uh, we did not show here right now, but for the sake of familiarizing yourself with this type of exercise, we put it up. So here's a chart. You would look at the departure times, you would look at the arrival times, but do not forget that there is a 10 minute walk implied in the end. So what you would look at in this chart in an organizing prioritizing set is something, how long is the bus journey? When does the bus leave Lelystad? What time it, 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 it arrives, obviously you calculate, and then you look at the Amsterdam Alsmeer leg of the journey, and you keep in mind the 10 minute walk in the end. So in this organizing and prioritizing exercise, if you had picked the 6.10, the 6 o'clock, 6 uh, o'clock, 10, 10 minutes bus, then you would be late from the meeting. So that would be the wrong answer to provide in an EPSO test. So in that sense, the 5 o'clock, 5.30 bus is the one that should be chosen in a similar organization and prioritization test. But don't worry, we'll come back to this type of test and we will cover uh, what it exactly uh, it, in, it entails and we will talk about where it fits in the overall system, in the overall exam procedure and you will understand much better a few tricks of how to master these type of tests. Now, a one word about our website that you might be already familiar with is that we have more than uh, 58,000 registered users, which we are very grateful and thankful for your confidence. And uh, something we pride ourselves with is that hundreds of them are now EU officials. And we have quite a large number of uh, following on Facebook. And I do encourage you to come and like our page because there we share lots of information about exams, about uh, tips and tricks, but we also try to share uh, entertaining and interesting information related to the European Union, related to the exams, and related to the overall idea of working in an exciting international setting. Now, we offer test packages to help you prepare for the exams. We offer webinars, which are online trainings, interactive two-hour trainings, where we train you on different parts of the exam to master the, the selective parts, uh, the little tips and tricks, and the little ideas of how to make the most of it and be among the top number of candidates. Now, today's agenda is going to be the following. We will look at how a day in the life of an EU assistant is. What does it mean in practice to be an EU assistant? Uh, hopefully, when you pass the exam, you will have a better idea what you are actually putting so much time and so much energy into to pass those exams and get the job that you have been struggling for so hard. Uh, after that, we will look at the different positions that are available in the current call for applications, in the current recruitment competition. Once we cover the different positions, we shall see one of the most fundamental questions that concerns so many people, and, and this actually took up a large majority of the questions we received, are you eligible? What are the conditions and the criteria of eligibility? And then a few words on why working as an EU assistant is a great opportunity, which will be followed by a brief discussion on how actually to get the job. What are the different parts of the exam? Once we covered uh, the issues related to getting the job, what are the next steps? What to do uh, in an action-oriented way to, to be a part of the recruitment competition and take part in the pre-selection phase, which is then followed by the assessment center. And the two last parts of today's uh, webcast will cover issues relating to preparation, and we'll finish off with a special exclusive offer for everyone who's following us today that you can make the most out of your preparation. We'll give a very special, unique discount on all our services so you can really make the most out of the EPSO assistant exams.